Hello, my name is Chris Folia, and welcome to VisFX Blender, the site where we explore VisFX possibilities using Blender. Today, we'll be breaking down this shot of this robot in my driveway. Okay, let's break this Blender file down for you people out there. First of all, to view this Blender file, what you're going to need is a recent build of the Blender 2.5 Tomato branch from the Google Summer of Code 2011. You can get this build from graphicall.org. We need the Tomato branch because in creating this file, I used the Tomato branch's new tracking features. As you can see, we have our background plate right here, and it is a movie, it's not a still image. So these points right here allowed me to very easily track the footage, and using the parallax data of these points, Blender, using the Tomato Branch's new tools, can easily reconstruct the 3D scene, as you can see right here. These spherical bundles, as they call them, represent the points that are over here in the Movie Clip Editor. So if we play back the 3D scene, we can see that the camera data has been reconstructed fairly accurately using Blender's new camera tracking tools. Now, further breaking down the scene, we, it, it's a very simplistic scene. We have a robot rig, which consists of just a few IK chains, as you can see here for the legs, and a couple of bones used for his head, torso, and body. And he is specifically on the first layer. Then on the second layer, we have the plane. I'm mentioning that they're on separate layers because that's very important for compositing later we have this plane. The plane is used purely for capturing shadow data of the robot that we can later composite onto the footage. We also have this sun lamp which is on both layers. And this is a very harsh sun lamp that is of orange color set at a value of 2. It's harsh because it only has a soft size of 1 which is the default soft size for lamps in Blender. However, I want it to be slightly soft, so I did set the samples up on the lamp. Further explaining lighting, I have an environmental lighting setup at 0.7 using the sky color, which I have set to sky blue, which is a crayon color, by the way. And that basically breaks down our scene. Now coming over to the render layers, render layers, by the way, are very, very different from 3D layers. Render layers basically allow you to further split up 3D layers during rendering. For instance, I have three render layers here. The first render layer includes just the robot and the sun. And the second render layer includes just the plane and the sun. Now normally, if I just rendered out this render layer with the plane and the sun, let me get you a better view here. If I just rendered out the plane and the sun, I wouldn't get the robot shadows. However, when I render it out with both, I get the robot and the shadows. But what if I just wanted the plane with just the plane having shadows from the robot? Well, that's what I use the render layers for. The only shadow layer only has this layer showing up rendered, but it renders it as though the other layer was still there. So we get the robot shadows cast on the plane without the robot being there. It's a fantastic feature used for compositing, which we use later in the node setup. So the render layers that I have are as follows. We have, the only we have the only robot layer, which again has the robot and the lamp, and we have the only shadow layer, which has the lamp and the plane for casting shadows of the robot, and we have the everything layer, which has, well, everything. I don't think I actually used this in compositing, though. It's noteworthy that the lamp has to be on both layers for the plane to get the robot shadows. And in the only shadow render layer, I've enabled the shadow pass, which allowed me to separate out the shadow data later in the compositing node editor. Now we're going to flip over to the node editor to break down the compositing setup for this scene. All of the compositing for this scene, by the way, was done completely in Blender, because Blender has a pretty, pretty darn good compositing setup. Now nodes they used to confuse me very much when I first got into compositing, but now that I've gotten my head around it, hopefully I can explain this complicated looking mess of nodes to you, which is actually a lot more organized than it originally was. 
So starting with this first group of nodes, this is where the shadow data comes in. This is the initial shadow pass from the shadow pass of the plane that was on that render layer. And that comes over here to our shadow node group, which is just one node, but when you split it up, it's a bunch of nodes, which looks kind of confusing. But what it is really is just the shadow pass coming in. It gets color corrected to get rid of the blue haze over here, the cyan haze. And then it gets color corrected further to pump some blue into the shadows. And then we blur the solid black one and screen it over the blue one, which gives us this neato effect using a screen node at a factor of 0.3. If we had it a factor of 1, it would look pretty dreadful. So at a lower factor, we just want some light spill on the shadows to give it a more realistic effect. Then we take it over to this curves node to further color correct it, um, add in some red, for instance, for the shadow, which then we multiply over our footage by a factor of the alpha channel of the plane. We only want it to multiply from this white area. White is multiplied, the black is ignored for the factor. Like, like for instance, the factor, the black is a factor of zero, white is a factor of one for the factor of the node getting multiplied over the background. So that gives us our shadow over the background, but it doesn't give us the robot over the shadow. So starting with the robot over here, without the shadow, this is just the robot coming straight from the robot only render layer, we do some interesting things. First of all, you're gonna notice in the footage there is some color block noise. It's, it's very noisy, it's not exactly great footage coming from my simple handheld Panasonic camera. So what we do is we come over to this colored noise node, which is another node group. So if you split it up, you can see my setup here. And what we do is I took a cloud noise system, two cloud noise systems actually, and overlaid them onto the robot, which gives us some colored noise, as you can kind of see. It's very low though, because in the actual footage, it's pretty low itself. And these time nodes animate the noise, so it flickers from frame to frame. Starting at frame 58 and going to frame 375, which is the time of the project, it animates from a value of 0 to 1. But I wanted it to animate more than that, so I multiplied the 1 by a 4 and by a 10 to animate the noise in the scene. So moving further along, we take what comes out of the colored noise panel, which is the robot with some colored noise on it, and we blur it slightly because you're going to realize the scene is looking at just the footage. Let me get a view node for that. Looking at just the footage, you can see that nothing is particularly sharp. It's all kind of soft because, again, not, not a professional grade camera, which even professional grade cameras aren't going to give you perfect footage. So we blur it slightly, we blur the robot slightly, so it matches the footage better. Comparing that, now he's sharp, now he's blurry. Of course, now he's a little bit too blurry, so I, all, I intentionally blurred him a little bit more than he's supposed to be blurred because I wanted to sharpen it some. Because you're gonna realize in, around the edges, it's high contrast on the film, it's because the camera sharpens the footage. So we also wanna sharpen the robot. So taking our now blurred, now sharpened, dirtied up robot that fits into the footage quite nicely. We take it and we use an alpha over node to put him over the shadow background plate. This is the background plate with the shadow and we just use an alpha over node to put the robot over the shadow. Now to get just the robot without the background we blur it, we, we alpha over it by a factor of the robot's alpha channel, blurred slightly blurred exactly as much as this, by the way, which I actually had it set to relative earlier. So the alpha channel is blurred as much as this, so it accurately puts it over the background. And that is our final composite. It looks pretty decent. We had to composite the robot a lot because nothing in the real world is going to look perfectly shiny or clean. And everything captured on footage is going to probably be slightly grainy, slightly blurred, or not, not perfectly sharp and clean. And that pretty much concludes the breakdown in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.
By the way, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for future topics, or just suggestions in general, please place them in the comments below.